Hi everyone, I am Dr. Penny Trainer. I am a paediatric clinical neuropsychologist. I work in Manchester um, in, bra in brain re injury rehabilitation in the community. I am also the founder and I guess developer of Goal Manager, which is a goal management software for rehabilitation. Um, I was also a winner of the Mike Barnes Award for Innovation in 2019. Um, and I had the honour of being able to mentor the next winner of the award for innovation in 2020, um, who's with us today. I'll let you introduce yourself, Ellis. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Ellis Parry, um, engineer and uh, CEO of uh, Newmind, and we're developing an app called Alfred, which is to help brain injured survivors and their family members work towards independence. And um, yeah, I was you know, very fortunate enough to win the 2020 Mike Barnes Award. Um, and Penny has been um, mentoring me and we've kind of been sharing our, our, our successes and, and, and difficulties. Great. Um, so shall we start kind of at the start um, and talk a little bit about Alfred? And could you tell us a little bit about what it is and who it's for and yeah, how you came about designing it? Yeah, so um, Alfred was really born out of a personal experience. Um, so I've got an identical twin brother who uh, suffered a brain injury back in 2012. And he went to um, a couple inpatient, uh, kind of the typical pathway that a lot of people go through. You know, um, he went to Adam Brooks, he was lucky enough to go to Learn, which is a great centre, and then on to Fen House. And um, at this point, you know, as family members, we were trying to look how we can try and contribute towards his recovery in any way possible. Um, and, you know, at that stage, early, you know, early after an injury is quite difficult and really we we don't really know what we we should be doing and um the kind of the level of care he got was very variable at the different places he went to um and we were always kind of pushing for him to go to a, a center called the Oliver Zangwill Center which um you know is, is a great is a great center and after uh, two years after his injury he was lucky enough to um to go there and whilst he was there we really kind of experienced the more kind of holistic neuro rehabilitation experience where the family was more involved and um luke was all, the, the team there was a little bit more forward thinking i think than some of the other places we uh, he went to but um he they were using different kind of technology and different techniques and uh, we really bought onto it as a family um and in particular, there was one um, device he was using was called NeuroPage, which, um, you know, it was a paging device. And uh, it, I could see the potential of it. It would kind of prompt Luke to conduct some of the strategies and the exercises he was learning at the center. Um, but when, whilst he was at home and, you know, if someone's got significant memory problems or executive functioning, it's a really important uh, process. And as an engineer, I could see this being used and just naturally was thinking this really could be done on a smartphone. And, you know, the, the kind of technology that that brings um, opens up a lot of other opportunities. So that kind of sat in my mind for a while and uh, met Andrew there and uh, we, we would kind of discuss several ideas on this topic. Um, and then I kind of like just parked it because I had a, a degree and um, a PhD to finish. And I kind of naively thought I'd try and keep this going on in the background. It didn't happen at all. Um, and then, yeah, it took until the, the very last year of my university when I, um, me and a couple of friends got together and we decided to really kind of create the company and and really like refine our vision and our product and just uh, and just go for it, really. Um, and the Ukabif Award was one of the first kind of, um, I guess, like uh, validation steps that we had and, and recognition where we had gone from, we had like a rough prototype and then we had coded up a uh, a working MVP and we had a, had a few users and, and Ukabif was, yeah, one of that. It was an amazing award for us to win because it was in a community that really knew what they were they're talking about they understood the problem we were trying to solve and it was just a great um a great kind of tip of the hat and saying that what we were doing is was valuable so yeah it was really good timing for us and uh yeah really really rewarding it's great i mean that's an amazing story and i'd love to hear more about how it's helped your brother and sort of shaped his recovery 
Um, and I know you've been really busy refining it and making it so it's more applicable to beyond um, just Luke's recovery, but to a wider range of people. And I think that's what you're working on at the moment, isn't it? About upscaling and being able to distribute wider. Do you want to tell us a little bit about where things are up to at the moment with that? Yeah, so um, Luke was kind of like the the guinea pig, if you like, at first, and uh, kind of the like the QA guy, the quality assurance guy, who had to go through Luke before it go anywhere else. But um, me and my co-founder, who uh, his name's Rufus, he's very into kind of user centered design. So we, although we had like a broad idea of the features that we wanted to implement, um, we always wanted it to be to come from a user need or to to be developed in alongside a user and i think for brain injury that's particularly important because the the accessibility issues and the you know the the there are such a range of problems that an individual can have um you really need to kind of identify the main what the, the most important ones that you can solve realistically um with the technology so we tried it to always have it coming from a user need and loop was the first and then we actually got we got a few others from um, a charity that he's involved with called the Silver Lining, which is an amazing charity, um, and it's kind of is geared at that position where you've they've done their neuro rehabilitation if they're lucky enough to have access to it, and you know the community rehabilitation programs they're in doesn't really exist, um, but they've kind of five years post injury, five ten years post injury. And they kind of know a little bit, you know, they're, they're like, uh, it's a community of like kind of older guiding su- survivors. And then you get some younger people okay, coming through. Model. Yeah, yeah. It, that's, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Right. A, mentor, a mentorship. Um, and I, they, they have all this knowledge to share and they, it's a community where people come in. And if you're like a year or two post injury, someone comes in and then there's like, uh, you know, there's, the fireside chat if you like of yeah. you know this is what this is what worked for me this is what not you know and just kind of sharing knowledge is really useful um and for us that that was kind of targeted a little bit where we wanted alfred to be positioned there's a little bit of that transition from support to to no support which i think is is really lacking in the system um so we had yeah we got a we got a few more users on there um and the way that we've been trying to design it is uh we're not we take on a kind of batch of users every few weeks um, and then uh, we iterate our features kind of with in close contact with those those users and then kind of take take more on so yeah we're up to about 90 users now um, and uh, yeah it's it's now getting a bit interesting because we're seeing so many different uh, points of view but um, I guess we've got a kind of a live active focus group there so it's uh, yeah yeah we, uh, yeah we do we do um, and it's yeah, it's great. I mean, you know, that we're getting so many kind of ideas and stuff coming through. That now it's a matter of choosing which ones we're gonna we're gonna focus on. Yeah, <clears throat> it sounds like a real philosophy behind it is that idea of enabling people to be able to support themselves. Um, and it sounds like you're talking about something that will bridge that gap between being very dependent on services um, or or not having those services that you need um, to actually being able to be out in the community, to be able to function in your own life as best as you can. Um, but with the with the family member input, which is a bit I'm, I'm interested in hearing a little bit more about how how the family members now feed into Alfred and, and uh, how it becomes a bit of a conduit of their support as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think the main kind of problem or, or, or you know, uh, one of the major issues is that the uh, neuro rehabilitation window is often, you know, 10 to 12 weeks or so. I don't know, it can, varying, but around that long, whereas the, the recovery window for most individuals is years to possibly lifelong. So there's a huge difference there and the community kind of neuro rehab system which was developed a little bit to kind of provide that long-term support just really doesn't function properly massively underfunded really variable across and there are kind of band-aid approaches of charities and stuff like this um but they don't you know it's really just trying it's a small fix to a big problem and we did some research into the proportion of care that is delivered by family members and um for two years post injury 70 percent of the care is actually given by the family members um 
and so you you look at that figure and and yet to me that makes kind of sense because that's a very that's what happened with us um and although you you, you can you'll have a carer pardon me <clears throat> you'll have a carer come in to do a few hours of work but um uh you know maybe a day or or whatever but often they're not trained they're trained to deliver basic care but not really kind of that level up um and family members are they often very capable of delivering this a kind of advanced care that might actually improve the long term outcomes because they they're they're often they're driven to do it first of all they they understand the person so well they're there all the time and you know a lot of neuro rehabilitation is encouraging behavior change and family members are very capable of doing that if they're given the tools and they're given the knowledge and they're kind of invited on the journey um and we're trying to do that through so it's we we try and kind of break everything to a simple process on Alfred so the neuro rehabilitation that was that's currently on is delivered via a prompt um with some kind of information and then it's like an actionable thing to do um and we send the prompts to the survivors but we also send different ones to the loved ones and it might be like a little a nugget of psychoeducation coupled with something that they can do with their their loved one and it's trying to encourage them to kind of get on board with the their recovery and and to be honest we we're, we're still investigating um you know how how we can do it to the best best of our ability but we think it's a real untapped resource the fam the, the family member in particular um and we've had some quite interesting data from uh, like so therapies that are delivered on Alfred which is is in this prompt format but ones that are given by a family member uh, are I think it's 15% more likely to be completed than one that's given by you know automatically by Alfred or, or by a clinician so and, and I, I, we haven't investigated why that is but you think you know the subtle way it could be worded or whatever is oh, it's, uh, it's really yeah tailored exactly to that yeah thing. yeah yeah exactly and, you know we've been yeah. we've been wor wondering whether to go down kind of like and and a machine learning approach of trying to personalize these therapies or you know and then we we kind of realize that the family member is like it's like a h human and human and intelligent thing that's actually uh right there uh, and ready to be used. yeah yeah exactly and we don't have to write any complicated uh algorithms to use it so yeah and i like that idea like you say that they want to be helpful and just need to some support and perhaps how to deliver it um because people have to go to work they have to go and get on with their lives and they can't always be at home mm. um or with the individual all the time and my understanding of how alfred works is you know um if i was the caregiver or relative of a survivor I could be at work um, and set it up. So I sent prompts at particular times of day, um, knowing that my my relative has things that they need to do and perhaps they struggle to do them at those times, um, can really follow them up. And I believe you can send images and other things that can be useful mm. just to um, really bolster that message. I mean, I think that's fantastic and mm. not something that I have ever seen. Um, I'm, you know, I'm a pediatric neuropsychologist and always on the lookout for technology um, because, you know, I work with young people who are very much engaged with technology um, and also because, as you say, we're very thin on the ground. There are not many of us and we're constantly always trying to find ways to enable people to get as much rehab as they can. And I think mm. this is a real fantastic way. Mm, um, thank you. And it really makes the family member part of the team. So we talk about this idea of collaborative working and um, everyone being on the team. And this, to me, feels like it really brings everyone together. Everyone's working from the same same base. So, yeah, it's great. That's, that's, the, that's the plan. That's the plan. Yeah. yeah. I was very impressed. So, um, and like I say, we uh, we were pleased to see that um, when you when you came and you presented the award, just how much programming has gone into this and how much thought has gone into this. And I know undoubtedly your expertise and background as an engineer um, has been really helpful towards that. But it sounds like your brothers made a really positive contribution in both having this project to work on together, mm. which probably is rehab for him in itself and has been uh, a great activity. No, no, definitely. I, I so Rufus as well, the the my co-founder, who's uh, he's the real kind of software where uh, the software wizard, I, I kind of come in the code and uh, kind of break it a little bit. And uh, <laughs> that's kind of what, back what together. Got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but with, you know, it, Luke, Luke working on New Mind has been huge, really, really huge for him. It's kind of difficult to um, really put a significance on that because it, I think it touches on this, um, this idea of, of having a purpose which i think is so important in uh in a recovery journey because you know if 
there are so many things that an individual you know could do or should do or 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 some days they want to some days they don't that can really push push them along but ultimately like it it needs to be a push it needs to be a drive and like a, they they need to want it. Ellis, when we were looking at a new mind, when you were talking about it at the when we were judging the award, the thing I think I was most impressed by was um, how it for it really integrates everyone and everyone's um, everyone's part of the team um, with new mind. You've all developed it together, um, and I wondered, you know, for your brother, what that's meant for him really, because um, I guess even just working on this project with you has probably been rehabilitation in itself for him. Yeah, I you know it's, I think it's difficult to put a you know significance on how much that has really helped him along, um, and I think it uh, it touches on this uh, idea which is really really important in your re- rehabilitation, which is you know having a purpose, having something to uh, to work towards, and um, you know I think it feeds into so many different components of neuro rehabilitation, which is yeah ultimately a very tough difficult journey that these people have to go on and it requires a lot of uh awareness and sacrifice and uh, behavior change and um you know having a a purpose can just feed into all these different areas um you know so so much and um and just improve the happiness so after a journey after a brain injury sorry um one of the one of the major problems that i've uh, that I've seen observed is people feeling like they, you know, their old self is gone. And now there's this new person who can't do this, can't do what they used to do and da, da, da. And, you know, it's not, you're almost battling like the the mental issues that aren't caused by the injury. It's like a, it's a psychological almost, you know, depression and stuff and having a, having a purpose that really gets them up in the morning and it can, it can just be huge. And Luke's been blessed for, he, he has his athletics, which has been going really, really well. That's always been a thing for him. And now it's like the athletics and, and, and Alfred. Um, and it's been, yeah, it's just been fantastic for him. It's wonderful. Really wonderful. Um, and so I thought just, you know, for the sake of everyone kind of watching this, maybe you could just, um, yeah, tell us a little bit about your next steps with it. Like, how can they get hold of it? If they want to be part of the user group, perhaps. I mean, where, where are you at with things? And yeah, how do we get involved? How do we get a hold of this? Great. So uh, yeah, it's currently in uh, beta. So um, it is available on um, app and uh, Play Play Store and uh, the App Store. Um, but we're kind of onboarding users um, individually, really. So we, we'd like to speak to them before they come on. Um, but yeah, if there's anyone watching, if they if they uh, sign up on our website, www.newmind.co.uk, um, I'll get in contact with them or they, they can, you know, they can down, download the app uh, directly. The next steps are, um, so we've been very fortunate to to be part of uh, this, these accelerator programs, which is for kind of tech that are trying to address uh, meaningful problems. It's um, uh, part of the, part of Oxford Uni Elevate program. Um, and it's like a kind of a structured course of like giving you guidance on, on basically how to run a company, which is something that uh, we kind of thought of secondary after like, you want to make a tool, you want to kind of like make, you know, try and do something that helps in this area. And then uh, really you've got to, you've got to run a kind of successful company around that. Otherwise, uh, you know, you can make a little tool, but uh, this, I think there's actually a, a big problem in healthcare in general. And uh, you know, you can make, a great little app or software package to address a little, pro- you know, not a little problem, but a, a specific problem. Um, but I think there needs to be like, it needs to be of a certain quality and uh, both for like, for all the different users, because we're just, we're so used to having high quality applications now for free that, you know, even a, even a user with, a, a, you know, a brain injury who might really get a lot of detail, if they don't like the look of it, they don't like the feel of it. They're just not going to use it. So you know, you M Health applications need to be of a high quality, in my opinion. Um, You're right, and they need to fit some of the consistency that we find with other applications. So 
Um, you know, with my software goal manager, we're now in the second iteration of it. And it now looks probably much more recognizable to a lot of people in terms of how most websites look, how most things interface now. We tend to have trends and we tend to get really used to knowing where we find information, how to get into things, how to close things. And it's important we're consistent with that because that will make it much more accessible for people ultimately further down the line when it's something they're familiar with. They can open it up and they can they can easily work with that. So I, I think you're absolutely right that mm. um, it, it the part of the problem is it takes a lot of development and it takes mm. a lot of time to get it looking right and working. Uh, yeah. Right. yeah, and we're competing against, you know, the Googles and the Facebooks that have spent billions of pounds yeah. on, on the look and feel of, of these apps. Um, I guess we can like try and pinch what we can <laughs> from from their designs. But yeah, it's so, you know, that, and in order to do that for us, uh, yeah, we we need some funding and and um, we we need to run a tight ship, and um, that's kind of the what what we're doing on the business side. Um, managed to raise raise some funding to uh, to really kind of take take this take this further, um, and then I guess uh, you know we're looking the uh, newer rehab. Well, healthcare in general is a minefield, but newer rehabilitation in particular is it's so difficult to uh you know we have we have so many users you've got the family member you've got the the, the brain injury survivor you've got a clinician you've possibly got a case manager and um for us it's like we want to figure out which is the the best kind of first user to really go go for where is going to where's where's going to add the most value um these are you know challenges that we yeah, have looking forward to tackling yeah, in the near future that's a really helpful point to raise because I think that reflects my own experience of who's ultimately your end user um, mm. might not be the person who ends up engaging or bu or, or purchasing that product mm. um, or the mm. person that, you know, so for example, with my goal setting software, mm -hmm. ultimately the benefit is to the clients, to the, to the brain injury survivors, but they would be unlikely to be someone searching out software to set goals for their, to organize their own multidisciplinary team. That would be a structural mm. administrative thing that would probably be a case manager or a clinician on the team might be looking towards but ultimately mm -hmm. it's of the greater ben benefit to the client and if they knew it was going to benefit them they might be able to be empowered to sort of reach out mm -hmm. to some of these things so uh, yeah it's a, it's interesting kind of just time really of thinking how do we how do we get to talk to the people that mm -hmm. need our help um yeah no i completely yeah feel your pain there it's you know you've got a different end user different economic buyer possibly three different people who could benefit from it so you know yeah. it's uh it's a it's a, a difficult challenge i think but um when we both need to get right i think yeah yeah well on that note actually perhaps we could just um talk a little bit about just the general process really of working in technology within this industry do you have any top tips for anyone coming through it's you know mm. your your product came very much um organically through an experience and also you know it coincided with your special interests and where you were at in life and and you know having your, your business partner who obviously had the same interest in um and able to bring those together um i've always found the same with my product it evolved organically from my service from a need for my service and i personally feel it fits better that way rather than us trying to sort of shoehorn um what people need into existing things mm. it's far better to grow um mm. alongside what people need but yeah it would just be useful to hear your your thoughts and your experiences on that i think you've got to you've got to start with really a focus on a complete focus on on the user who's going to benefit from it um and maybe you know we just talked about having different types of users and stuff i think if you're first starting out, you've got to throw you've got to throw that away and just look at just focus on one because you're you haven't got a lot of time and uh, you know if it's just it'll just be a couple of you who you just got to really drill down. And I think both of us that focus came from our experiences and we could see those problem. But if you're if you're not directly involved, uh, you know you've really got to go and and take the, your user research to the kind of go ridiculous levels really put yourself into the shoes of that user what is it that they really need what are the biggest challenges um and then i think try and take you know you or if if you're working in innovation you often think that you've got to you've got to make a complicated tool i think it's quite the opposite if you have these like if you've got these needs that are really well defined try and think of the most simple solution that you can do to 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 make those less bad you know um 
and that was that was something that took us a very long time we had all these ideas of uh different directions that we could go and uh we had to kind of pull it back to something simple and there's kind of a couple of reasons for that you you need to be able to show like share that value with someone else and if you've got all these kind of complex features that you want to do it just gets lost um and also if you're just starting out you just need something simple because you you're only you will only be yourself for a small team so just grab something simple um and maybe the final thing final advice i'd probably give to myself would be to like uh kind of share i don't want to say steal things but like take things from other fields or other disciplines like we we wanted to incentivize our users to uh, complete these tasks better and um we could think of a bunch of different ways how we could do it or we could look at you know some apps that do it really well yeah the gamification and, and i think you can save a lot of energy there and um maybe fit that possibly feeds into a little bit of the problems in in our te using technology in our, our field is that it is just i feel it's quite far behind um so the the idea of a cognitive orthotic has been going around since the 1990s and you had a, a palm held device and you know no computer computation power no bluetooth basically no internet um and there was a lot of excitement around there and you kind of there were a few different solutions that were that were built up and you know now 2020 we've genuinely got the technology in our pockets to create a a, a real cognitive orthotic device and they just uh, it just hasn't really there hasn't really been many attempts recently um and i think one of the problems is that is just the healthcare landscape being so difficult to navigate um you've got high quality tools like google calendar and and this stuff for free um and neuro rehabilitation just you know the uh, the neuro space just hasn't really been seen as kind of a that in vogue area to innovate in um and it's yeah i think it's resulted in a in a real kind of sh we've kind of short changed these these patients as a result um I, I agree with that i think we're um i also come from a family of engineers who i think are frankly just baffled that we still do things in such a you know a paper-based and very simplistic way um you know when actually the technology is there and it's and it just takes someone to think about how do we how do we how do we cross pollinate across disciplines mm. um you know and bring in some of those ideas that are working really well um in other areas but actually can be applied to human beings and actually make mm. a difference to someone's life not mm. just make a company more profitable or in some of the other applications of these things mm. this is a chance yeah. that we can use that technology to really change people's lives so you're right it's yeah. difficult and challenging and hard to know the way through really Mm -hmm. I guess just to round things up, could you maybe just tell us a few things about how how that might have helped or how that might have given you a little step up in the right direction um, mm. on, on this uh, this very challenging and difficult and nebulous path? Mm. So, uh, as I said, the the kind of like the the validation that that the award brought was huge for us personally, um, and then also the the network. Um, so the Ukabif has got such a good reputation in this uh in this quite niche like little uh ecosystem of neuro rehabilitation everyone kind of knows or is aware of everyone else um so that's that was huge for us as a little startup who really we didn't have we we had no um we had like a little network but uh winning that award would just allowed us to people in the know kind of knew of us or you know it just gave us that 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 accreditation um and then the opportunity to work with um nihr brain mick who we kind of had some dealings with before but um unfortunately with covid it's been like a little bit uh difficult to to kind of get things going properly but um you know really looking forward to uh working even more with these guys um and yeah i i mean if anyone else uh I would just highly recommend going going applying to the Ukabif Mike Barnes Award. It, it's very rare that you have an opportunity to share what your what your idea is or what you've been making with such a group of you know experienced and like 
uh, caring individuals in, in this field. So yeah, I just highly, highly recommend it. That's great. I'm really pleased that's been your experience and uh, really pleased to be able to support you with it for as long as we can. So yeah. yeah. And thank you, Penny, as well, because your help has been invaluable. You're most welcome, Ellis. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to um, seeing you evolve, seeing Alfred grow, seeing New Mind grow. I'm sure you've got a whole bank of other apps and things that you're now thinking of. Now you've started with one. <laughs> um, it sort of opens up the door to many others. But uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing how you guys grow over the years. So yeah, thank you. Thank you.